Join Kids Hat Family. What is wrong, Tofu? I don't want to go to school today. Jim and Jerry took all the tokens I had collected for the charity and submitted it as their own. Now they are going to win the appreciation sticker. Don't worry about it, Tofu. Sometimes it's okay to let go of things and just hold on to the joy they brought you. I don't know, Tia. Do you know a nice story to help me believe? Sure. I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, a poor farmer was ploughing his field. When he hit something hard, it was a large metal pot. What's this? A metal pot? I wonder if there is something more valuable underneath. In the hope that he could find something more valuable, the farmer dug deeper and wider. Tired after hours of searching, the farmer decided to rest. He left his spade in the pot. and lay down under the tree. A while later, when he got up and went back to the pot, he was surprised. How is this possible? The pot is full of hundreds of spades. I had left only one in it. Looks like this is a magical pot. Let me see what will happen if I put a mango in it. Just as the farmer had thought, the one mango turned into hundreds of mangoes when he left it in the pot. This is truly a magical pot. I will take it home and use it to tide over our troubles. The farmer went home and hid the pot at a safe place. He then went to the market and sold the mangoes. He earned a handsome sum for them. On the way back, he brought some grains. He went home and put each one of them in the pot one by one. Enough of grains to last his family for the rest of the year. The farmer called his wife and told her everything that had happened. This is a blessing. 
We should use it wisely to become rich but also keep it safely hidden. The farmer agreed with his wife. Over the year, he slowly started putting things in the pot. Fruits, vegetables, textiles, and in some years, he turned around his family's fortune. Though they had been secretive and very careful about their magic pot, people started noticing how they had become rich. And soon their secret was out. It even reached the king's ears. Such a powerful magical pot should be a part of the king's treasury. The farmer has no right to keep it. Only I have the right to own that pot. The king ordered the soldier to bring the pot to the palace. The soldier stormed into the farmer's home. and confiscated the pot. They brought it to the king. Let me see what is inside the pot that makes it so magical. Once I find what it is, I will become a hundred times more powerful. The king peered over the pot and looked into it. As he did, he lost his balance and fell into the pot. As he fell, he hit his head on the edge of the pot and became unconscious. When he woke up, he saw that there were hundreds of kings like him. They all fought each other to get to the throne and died. Soon the news reached the farmer and his wife. Should we get the pot back now? The king was foolish and his curiosity killed him. But it is not safe to keep the pot anymore. We have enough money and riches to take care of us and our many next generations. Let us leave the pot within the king's treasury. Oh, thank you, dear. That was indeed an inspiring story. And I feel much better now letting go of those tokens. Good to know that, Tofu. Now will you please finish your cereal so that we can go? Hello boys, what's going on over here? We have a match against the team from the other neighborhood, but we can't agree upon anything. Not even on who will be the captain and what kind of a game we will play. Oh, that's bad. You need to be a bundle of sticks boys and not single sticks. What do you mean? You'll know in just a few minutes. Once upon a time, an old farmer lived with his three sons. They were lucky to have a good crop every year and grew richer every year. They did not have any respect in the village because the sons kept fighting amongst themselves.
One day, the farmer called his sons. My sons, I am now growing old and it is time for me to retire. But before I do so, I have a competition set for you all. The winner will get a big reward from me. What do we need to do, father? Here are three bundles of sticks. Each bundle has 10 sticks in it. The one who breaks each stick the fastest will be the winner. It was an easy task and the sons broke each stick into two quickly. As soon as they had done it, they started fighting again. I won, father. How can you win when I broke all the sticks first? I win. None of you broke the sticks as fast as I did, so I am the winner. Wait, the competition isn't over yet. I still have one more task for you. The farmer now handed over another bundle of 10 sticks each to each son. Now I want you to break the entire bundle of sticks into two. Remember, you have to break the whole bundle at one go. Don't pull out individual sticks. The sons tried hard. But they could not break their bundles. Father, it is not possible to break the bundle. Individual sticks can be broken. Yes, the bundle is very, very strong. Exactly. You three are also like the sticks. As long as you stay united like the bundle, nobody can break you. But if you keep fighting amongst yourselves, you are like the individual sticks, easy to break. The three sons understood the valuable lesson their father had taught them and never fought again. We have also been behaving like the three sons, Tia, isn't it? We've been fighting amongst ourselves. Yes, and if we continue like this, the other team will easily defeat us. We will not fight anymore. We will find a way to play together like a real team. That's a good decision, boys. All the best. Thanks, Tia. Tofu? Tofu! Tofu, what are you doing here? Your friends and I were waiting for you at the library. I thought you promised to go with us and help our librarian, Miss Peters, today. Oh dear, there are so many of you. I'm sure you can manage without me. But Tofu, you promised. Why are you so angry, dear? It's just the library. Yes, but you promised us. How can you be so careless, Tofu? If you behave like this, one day you will have no friends left. What do you mean? Haven't you heard of the bear and the two friends? No. Okay, let me tell you their story. Once upon a time, two friends had to travel through the forest.
It was a dangerous forest with many wild animals. There were lions, bears, snakes, and even poisonous spiders in the forest. As the two friends entered the forest, they were gripped with fear of what lay ahead. I am so scared. I wish we didn't have to go through this forest. I agree with you, but we have no choice. We must cross the forest to get to the other village. What if we get into trouble? Let's promise that if any of us get into trouble, the other will not run away. He will stay and help the one who is in trouble. Yes, I promise you, my friend. I won't leave you alone if you are in trouble. And I promise you the same, my friend. I am feeling less scared now. I think now I can easily cross the jungle. I'm glad. Let's go. After some time of walking through the forest, the two friends heard a rustling sound from the bushes ahead of them. They stopped in their tracks. Oh, what do you think it is? Shh! I don't know. I can't see clearly. Can you? Just then, a large dark figure appeared ahead of them. Oh no! It's a wild bear! It hasn't seen us yet. Run! Saying so, the boy climbed up a tall tree and sat on one of its branches. But his friend didn't know how to climb a tree. My friend, I don't know how to climb a tree. Please help me climb it. But the boy on the tree did not help him. He shook his head and held closely to the tree. The boy on the ground saw the bear approaching him and quickly lay down on the spot. He had heard that bears do not attack dead things, so he closed his eyes, held his breath and lay very still. The bear came close to him. It came close to his head and sniffed and smelled his ear to see if the boy was breathing. But the boy held his breath. Thinking that he was dead, the bear left the boy and moved on. After the bear had left, the boy from the tree came down. Are you all right? Y yes, I am. That was a close call. True, it was. Tell me, my friend, I saw the bear come close to your ear and whisper something. What did it say to you? It told me to be wary of a false friend and not keep such company. Which of the two friends do you think are behaving like Tofu? Like the one who broke his promise and climbed the tree. Hmm, what are you going to do about it? Uh, apologize to you and my friends and go to the library immediately to help. Okay, shall we go then?
Good morning, Tofu. Mm. Good morning, Tia. Are you all right, Tofu? Yes, but I'm worried about my friend Sam. <sighs> Who is that? And why are you so worried about him? Sam is new to our school. He joined my class last week. I like him very much. But some other boys have been lying about him, saying that he is not a nice boy. Oh, that's bad. And are you sad because he is your friend? Yes. I want people to see how good Sam is. And I don't know how to make it happen. If Sam is a good person, then I don't think you have anything to worry about, Tofu. Mm, I don't understand. Why? Let me explain it to you with the story I know. The Princess and the Pea Once upon a time, a young prince wanted to get married. So he went around the world looking for the right princess to marry. Alas, he found none. Something or the other was always amiss in all the princesses he met to be a true princess to his people. One stormy night, after the prince came back home, he and his family were having their dinner. when there was a commotion outside the castle door. The queen went to see what was going on. What is the matter, guard? Uh, there is a young girl at the door, your highness. She says she is a princess. Intrigued, the queen went to see the princess. When she got there, she was surprised to see a young girl drenched from head to toe. Who are you? I am a princess. I was passing through when the storm and lightning spooked the horses and they dragged my carriage into slush and mud. My men are still with the carriage trying to repair it. I have walked many miles to reach here. Nobody who looked at the young girl could believe that she could ever be a princess. She didn't look anything like a princess. With her hair disheveled and clothes and shoes full of mud, she looked like a poor peasant girl. You are welcome to stay here, O oh Princess. My maids will prepare a royal room and arrange for a hot bath and dry clothes for you. Do join us for supper once you feel better. Come on in. Thank you very much, Your Highness. By the time the queen returned to the dining table to join her family, the prince had been informed about the stranger at the door and the queen's decision. Mother, 
Do you really believe that she is a princess? Her appearance betrays her, but her eyes shine with courage and there is humility and grace in her behavior, just like that of a princess. However, we must wait till tomorrow morning to know whether she is really a princess or not. Saying so, the queen retired from the dinner table and went up to the room that was being prepared for the princess. Your Highness, the princess is in the bath. We are preparing the bed for her. Very well. Fetch me 20 of the softest mattresses that the castle has to offer. Yes, Your Highness. Once the maids had left, the queen took out a pea from her pocket and placed it right in the middle of the princess's bed. When the maids returned with the mattresses, she ordered them to place them on the top of the pea. That night, the princess slept on her special bed. But she had a sleepless night. She kept tossing and turning all night long. In the morning, she joined the queen for breakfast. How are you, my dear? Ah, uh, I am well, thank you. But you look so tired. Is something wrong? You must tell me. Forgive me, Your Highness. I do not wish to sound like an ungrateful guest, but I haven't slept all night. My bed was really soft. But something kept poking me in the back and I have bruises all over. The queen smiled happily because she knew that the girl in front of her was a true princess. Only a real princess who has lived all her life in comfort can feel a small pea kept 20 mattresses below her and only a kind princess would not mention her discomfort unless asked to do so. Son, she is the one you have been looking for. Soon the prince was married to the princess of his dreams and they happily lived in the kingdom where all the people loved and respected them both a lot. Wow, Tia! No matter where the princess would have gone, people would have always recognized her because of her behavior. Exactly, Tofu! And the same thing applies to your friend Sam. If he is a good person, Soon people will be able to see that in him. And if he's not, people will be able to see that also. Yes, you are right, Tia. I don't think I have to worry about him anymore. I am sure everyone will see his truth soon. I guess 
we have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God, I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep! How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat! Isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet, and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox, what about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha. I guess you have to think about it on your own. But I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu. Always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries... They might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, dear. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp. And I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go! For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, Join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.